It's now been over a week of war in Ukraine after Russia initiated the invasion. The UN says over 1.5 million Ukrainians have now fled to neighboring countries. I'm here with Yuri Polyashko, who is still living in Ukraine. Yuri, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with me during these very difficult times. Can we start by, by talking about your current location right now? So on the second day of war, uh, me and my wife, we moved from the capital of Ukraine, Kiev, to a very small town in the central Ukraine in Cherkasy region. But every day we have uh, the air alarms. Uh, it's like several times a day. I imagine it's a constant back and forth between the basement and your regular living room, right? In the middle of the night as well. Yeah, so you just can sleep and you, you hear this uh, sirens and you just very, wake up, you cover, you just wear very quickly and go to the basement. For now, it's quite safe and calm in this small town because small towns are not the main aim of the enemy. And we consider the smaller the town, the better is to stay. So for context, for people who are listening to you, you are the CEO and founder of a video animation company in Ukraine. Now, I understand that you're trying to keep working as usual, right? Uh, do, do you, how, how is that atmosphere going? People from our team moved to different cities, uh, different villages, very small towns or abroad. So they are just, uh, relocated to different different places and some of them uh, go to military to help them uh, they are being uh, teached how to wear and use a weapon so it it seems like you are all trying to keep a sense of normalcy in there in, in the midst of the crisis you know tr you try to keep the business going while at the same time trying to deal with this war that that's right so for instance we have the script writer in odessa and I asked him, hey, Nikita, can you make a script today? And he said, sorry, today I'm helping to evacuate, uh, to just relocate uh, my friends and family. So I'm not accessible today. Maybe I will try to do something tomorrow. So it happens like this. So men are not allowed to leave the country, only women and children, correct? That's right. And all elderly people, elderly men. I, I know that the Russian military has continuously promised that they will establish safe corridors for people to escape, but they keep violating that. We see all in the news the very, very uh, terrifying images of, of missiles. The Russians, uh, they just closed the cellular, cellular connection, so no mobile don't work, no electricity, and they don't allow them to escape. So people don't know what's happening to their families who left. I have my mother staying in, in the East North actually, and uh, she's staying in the town that is not occupied, but surrounded by the enemy. So basically she can't leave uh, because the transportation doesn't working and she's staying in her house. She's okay, they have the electricity, but they can't leave the the town. I have my friend and relative staying in Sumi, which is the most eastern uh, place. It's like very, very close to to Russian border, and they don't have electricity and they don't have uh, central heating, so they just stay in the in the basements for I guess a week or so. They can't leave, so they don't. They are not allowed to leave the city. The hardest thing is that most of people who want to live, they are now situated in Kharkiv or eastern parts. To leave the country, for instance, to Poland or somewhere to the west, you need to cross the big Ukraine from the east to the west. At the moment, what's happening? People from, uh, from the east, from Kharkiv especially, take their cars and move across the whole Ukraine. So normally this road takes around 10, 12 hours in normal times. Now it takes three, four days. And the other way is by train. Train is still, is still working, but you can just see the picture, how many people want to get to the train. We've seen these images over and over, but they keep coming. So many kids crying here, so many kids just tired and hungry, 
and cold. It's like, I don't know, 100 times more people than a single train can, can, can have. It's so many people. I don't... Do you think the time will soon come for you to have to be on the battlefield? We actually have more people wanting to fight than weapon we have and, and, the, and the tools. So there's a strong sense, you would say, of people just wanting to fight, defend their country, their neighborhoods, their streets, their people. Th that's right. It, it's now the mood and, and the stage in Ukraine is so that almost every man who has two hands and two legs ready to, to stay and to fight with anything, with sticks, everybody. I don't know anybody who doesn't want. Okay. Me too, actually. We still don't have any signs of how or, or when this conflict is going to end. So what is your personal overview? Uh, we still uh, totally believe in our victory. I mean, at least to the situation, to the exit that will be good for Ukraine. I mean, like, so the, the Russian troops will leave Ukraine one day uh, quickly or slowly, but in any way they will leave and uh, will be a free country. But uh, the, the bad thing about this, we don't know when and how and with what ruins and with what deaths or how many deaths of people will happen. I, I think that it may be is a long term war. Now we see it doesn't happen very quickly. It's uh, very slow, no conquesting, but bombing from time to time and all this uh, pressure. It's very bad because actually the, the now now the problem is uh, we are running off uh, the food and the petrol and uh, some some basic things to live. Now, the question that civilians around the world have is how can we help? What can a person like me help uh, do to help? And are, are there any specific items that we should donate? The main things I, I would say is that just money support of the army as i said people are so they they are they wanting to fight they need the tools uh the other way you can send we have the national delivery service uh like nova posta and they can deliver any goods any help any any like ob objects for totally free to ukraine so you can just go to their website and send anything you want some i don't know just anything, food, uh, wearing, so anything. And uh, what, what I consider is most important is the information spread. Of course, I've, I've been talking to many Russians and Belarusians people, they're not, they're not really sensitive to the situation. They, they behave like nothing happens. So we want to deliver information that <laughs> things are happening and the war is happening. Thank you so much, Jury. Uh, again, I know you're dealing with a very ter terrifying moment right now in your home country. So thank you again for such uh, an informative and, uh, and descriptive account of what's happening in Ukraine. Th and thank you all, of course, for taking the time to listen to this conversation. Thank you for being, how to say, it, that you, you are just touching this, this topic and you want to spread it and you want to deliver to the to the world that's very important thank you